Well, hello everybody. Welcome to this historic moment. It is the first of this raunchy ratchet podcast. We're going to call it the 1020 podcast just for now until we figure out like a, a true name. There's no inspiration behind the name or nothing like that. Uh, I am going to be the host. Uh, my name is Benny and uh, that's about all you need to know about me. Uh, this podcast here is going to be about storytelling, and it's about telling the craziest, wildest, ratchetest, ratchet stories of uh, people, just, just everyday people. I'm trying to get as many uh, different guests from as many different backgrounds and lifestyles as possible, and I'm just trying to see, um, I'm just trying to get an insight into their life. Uh, I was, I was, um... What do you call it? What do you call that word? I was inspired. I was inspired by a few videos on YouTube about this guy from New Zealand, and uh, he was telling me, he was telling, not me, he was telling stories about his uh, times in net labs and the park and crap like that. So anyways, I was inspired by that, and I said, you know what? Wouldn't it be interesting to just take normal people and just have them tell their stories? So that's what we're here to do. Um, if you guys would like to come on the show, I am definitely open to having uh, guests reach out to me or I'll reach out to you and we can work something out here because uh, early on it's hopefully, uh, I mean, well, it's just going to be tough to get guests at first. But we have our first guest. Uh, this is my man Huey here, George, well, we call him Huey. Um, he's a, been a good friend of mine for a little over a year now and uh yeah, he's going to come on here telling the stories of uh, of Nassau County. So uh, introduce yourself a little bit. Um, How's it going? Uh, I'm Huey, a.k.a. George, a.k.a. The Don, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so I mean, I've been living in Unidale all my life. So I basically know it like the back of my hand. And, you know, and things out here, you know, it's kind of whack. But I mean, you know, I'm trying to make a future for myself. I'm trying to make a future for a lot of people out here, you know what I'm saying? But uh, but yeah, me and Benny started off uh, kind of in a weird way, didn't we? Yeah, weird way for sure. We'll get to that a little bit later. But I wanted you to first just describe yourself. I want a, an image. Oh, you want an head. image, image all right, all right. of your head, and I want people to know who you are uh, on the inside a little bit. All right. Oh, on the inside. Oh shit, we're gonna get personal. Then. Inside and the uh, well, just right. basic traits. Basic traits. All right, basic traits. I'm a pretty introverted person, you know what I'm saying? I don't really like to go out like that, but when I do get invited, I will, you know, I will try to have some type of fun with some type of people. Um, Damn. Yeah, I mean, overall, I just, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't really see myself as much, like as, I guess, as a grand thing. I've been told otherwise by other people. Um, but I mean, I'm a pretty chill guy. I just, I like to do the regular, you know, nothing too crazy. I'm pretty, I don't like to say the word basic, but I'm pretty, uh, pretty reserved to myself. And, uh, I guess physical appearance, um, pretty bulky. <laughs> He's not, 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 definitely not obese, but not any chance of the means, but, you know, yeah, but coming down from the thick. I, I saw some old pictures. The, oh, oh yeah. definitely on the yeah. Oh yeah, yeah definitely yeah. on the come down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. It was uh, it was it was a rough pass before. I think uh, actually, my ninth grade year, I was about two hundred and thirty pounds. Ninth grade year. Jesus Christ. I was two thirty in ninth crazy. grade. Yeah, yeah. You that was like five nine, like or five. Yeah, 10, I'm like, like five nine, five ten. Five, but at the time, I was probably like five six, five seven. Jesus Christ. So I was two thirty, five seven, five six. I was like 14 years old. I had long, like Metallica type style hair. Yeah. I was like baggy jeans, baggy shirts, dirty shoes. I I just I was dirty. I was disgusting. <laughs> but like I felt my I felt like I was like the coolest nigga around. Nobody just like accepted me. Right. That's what it was. But then I came to terms that it wasn't that when I was walking down the hallway and a girl I guess caught a whiff of me. And was like, holy shit, nigga, go run to the shower and get the fuck out of the school. And ever since that day, I've been taking showers consistently every <laughs> single day for the past. How many days has it been since like 2014? God. Fuck it. Fuck Thousands it. Whatever. Of days. Whatever. But yeah, but basically, oh God, we're going to go back into school life. Well, I mean, all right. 
So school life for your boy was very, very difficult because I, I, the friends that I have now, you, you know them, but for the people that don't know, my friends are Benny, of course, but he wasn't in my high school. There's a uh, Willie, there's Walter, there's Edwin, there's no way Bruno, Emmanuel, Alex, and then a couple other fuck niggas that I don't talk to anymore. And, and I only kept it with them. So they only knew the real me. And then outside of them, I never really wanted to expand because I was always like, okay, with just comfortable. Comfortable was the main thing for me. So, so during high school, I was very, uh, how do you say, what's the word? Um, I guess you could say like, like weird as fuck. Weird as fuck. So were you, uh, an observer or a doer? I was definitely an observer. I'm an observer, for okay. sure. Yeah. So these stories are gonna be these stories. Observation, a lot of yeah, observations. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like I d- that. I do have some doer stories that I don't know if it's legal to tell, but I got some. Okay. All right. So this, since moving to this area, I moved here about three years ago, uh, and look, it's it's not the worst part. This is not Baltimore City. I, I mean, this is definitely not that where. I, uh, close Jesus. to where I live, but this is like there is a bit of because like coming down here because like East Meadow Meadow is kind of close and like okay. East Meadow is a pretty nice area relatively. Oh yeah, and then you come here, it's kind of like this mid range point. But I was driving to I was going to um, RBC yesterday, oh, yeah. and I was driving, <laughs> and, but some of the towns on the way to that, which is a nice town, RBC is a nice town, but yeah, beautiful place, actually. beautiful. But then some of the towns oh, going Jesus. through it are just atrocious. Jesus so, anyways. Christ. So Uniondale is kind of like, um, I think Uniondale is kind of like the middle ground. It's like, it's like, it's, it's ghetto, but it's like converting to not be ghetto anymore. Yeah, for sure. For so, sure. Because like the people here are a lot more reserved okay, for sure. Like for the people sure. at Uniondale, like they're a lot more, they're a lot more chill guys. And rather, rather if you go into Hempstead, which is the town right next to it, that is just the, oh my God. Hempstead is a whole, like, circus show. Oh, it's a circus show. I mean, it's actually circus. So, anyway, so, all right, about these high school, what what is uh, oh, what is one of the first uh, instances that, because this, you went to Uniondale High, right? I went to Uniondale, Uniondale High School, yeah. So, that's like a, you know, there's definitely some shit going down there. Oh, yeah, every day. I mean, my ninth grade year, I have a vague memory just because I, I do smoke a lot of weed, so it kind of, it kind of, like, it comes in and then it leaves. But for the most part, from what I remember, my ninth grade year, it was it was a pretty cool year. I think that was the year where I really found out, you know, I need friends. <laughs> it, it got to a point where it was like, like, I didn't realize how bad it was to sit at lone, alone at lunch mm-hmm. when when people would come up to you and ask you if you're OK. Oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, especially with his long hair and all that oh other stuff. Oh, my God. I mean, I'm sure it was like... I, like, I was weird to the point where I wore sweaters in, like, 80-degree weather. Jesus. Because I did not like showing my face. Uh-huh. So, I would be that kid, the only kid in a sweater, in 80-degree weather, sitting alone at a lunch table with his hair covering his face, listening to music. Mm. So, I was that kid. Um, and this music, by the way, was... Uh, what uh, was this music? Oh, uh, it was definitely Odd Future, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. uh, I mean, nothing too crazy. Nothing I think, too crazy. Okay. Jesus Christ, my music taste before was not atrocious, but, oh my God, there's definitely some questionable things in that in that realm that I, I wish I could probably take back. It's a metal, right? Well, okay, metal's not that bad, but like, 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 no, no, no offense to my dubstep people out there, but, um. Jesus Christ, dubstep. Oh Man, my a lot God. of dubstep. Yeah. Oh my God. Dubstep was the shit. Fuck. Who? Dubstep wise. Dubstep wise, all I can remember is Skrillex. Skrillex. Skrillex, <laughs> Skrillex, was, the, Skrillex. That Skrillex was, like was the fucking dude. Oh my God. I yeah. remember I remember listening to what song was it? Um that song where where somebody yells call 911 now. Oh my god. That was my fucking song. You just listen to it on repeat. Yeah, and I really thought that this was music of the future. I'm like this is what everybody's going to be listening to in like 5 6 years. Oh for sure. And come to find out now if you listen to dubstep you're a fucking weirdo. Yeah, cuz like EDM's gone in a totally different direction. Oh my god, point. EDM's another one. I hated EDM. I still hate EDM. Mhm. It's just I don't see a point in it. Okay. I just yeah. But, but yeah, but I mean, I guess I was into electronic music for a while. I was definitely into Moby. 
I know a oh, lot. Of, Moby, yeah. Moby, okay, Moby was yeah. great. Moby, Dead Mouse for sure. Yep. Uh, who was the guy that that uh that died recently? The, uh, VC Avicii, or, uh, Avicii, Avicii, Avicii. Yeah. Martin Garrix. Okay. <laughs> I was definitely into like a lot of electrical, like just different sounding music. But what really brought me as a whole together was Odd Future. Was Odd Future. That was the one music group that like made me feel like, all right, you're weird, you're different, but it's okay. It's okay for sure. Yeah. Because like, I remember what it was like. Maybe sixth, seventh grade when Tyler dropped Yonkers. For you, it was sixth. Yeah, yeah. It was like it was like like seventh, eighth for me, like around. There, yeah, yeah, because because Yonkers dropped what like 2011, 2012? 2011, I would have been like, I think it was twenty eleven. Yeah, that would have been like seventh grade, eighth yeah. grade. Yeah, yeah. Don't fact check us, cause no, no, don't cause fact check we us. Because we have no sure. idea yeah, what the hell no, we're talking about. We're just about. doing this shit over the top. I'm not Google searching <laughs> anything, by the way, in this thing. So, anyways, okay. So, so what were you observing though? Like, uh, observe wise. All right. So, what would a typical day like like around you look like? In this a place? typical day in Uniondale would. Okay, so if I'm I'm gonna give y'all like a visual aspect of Uniondale. So Uniondale is. Compared to other high schools around the area, Uniondale is one of the smaller high schools. Uniondale really isn't, it, I guess, it's got it's got three floors, Uniondale. So it's three floors, and the walls are all colored in, like, this, like, really, like, shitty peach color with, like, these ugly, like, forest green tiles on the wall and oh. then, like, these tan tiles on the floor. And that was my everyday view of the school it wasn't even like i've seen movies i've seen shows i've even seen photos of other people's high schools and they're all like school spirit they got walls painted they got everything this school had nothing Mm -hmm. this school was disgusting oh and the school the only i think the main reason why the school felt like a prison was because we had metal detectors before we walked into the school okay because so this is what we're dealing with here people (laughs) yeah so Again, for safety purposes, it was it was fine, but but I don't. It was just a waste of time. It would take thirty minutes for me to get inside the school, mm-hmm. and but the I I mean I understand why because when my sister was in high school a couple years back, there was this the only Chinese kid in the school, and then this other Hispanic kid had beef. They were yelling at each other in the in the in the lunch room. And I think the Chinese kid, like, slapped the shit out of him or something. So then this Hispanic kid doesn't speak any type of English, probably came from the motherland, like, two, three weeks ago, pulls out a box cutter and stabs the guy in the neck. Holy shit. And the guy has no idea what the fuck is going on. And everybody's in a circle telling him, you're bleeding out your neck. And he's like, what? And he's, like, touching his neck and he just doesn't feel anything. Security comes, police come, Hispanic kid jumps out the cafeteria window and dips, and nobody knows where he is for, like, two, three days. Really? He, got, all, he ran, like, ran, well, because I guess all the attention went to the Chinese kid. And yeah, like, to yeah, him out. yeah, yeah. So, everybody's looking for this kid. They find this kid sitting at a random McDonald's just eating food, and that's how they caught him. So, oh so God. yeah, so that's probably one of the reasons why we had metal detectors, right. but... But I mean, everybody snuck everything in. Like, uh, there was a couple kids actually. I don't know if I should be saying this. I'm not gonna name nobody because no, I'm, no, not, yeah. I'm not trying to go to prison yeah. nah, you're good. or get killed. But there were some people who would pay off the security guards in the school to let through with like with weed, with other types of things, and and yeah, I mean, Uniondale is a corrupt place. I'll tell you that. Yeah. I'll tell you that for sure. But observing wise, I mean. It was pretty typical, you know, you'd have your fight f- from, you know, from like 9 in the morning to like 1 p.m. Nothing too crazy. I mean, that's pretty basic. Um, Oh, one year, though. I do remember this one year. I was walking down. So we have, I guess, different sections of the school. But there's this one section that got built, and it's called the catwalk. So the catwalk is like... um. It's, it's divided between the first and the second floor, and it, like, it connects, I think, the west side of the school and the east side of the school. It connects it together, and they call it the catwalk. So, one day, I was walking by, because I was skipping class, because, fuck math. Yeah. I don't know if... It, I mean, that's fact. I mean... It's <sighs> pointless, but, but, yeah. Yeah, but, alright, anyways. <laughs> so, I'm walking down, and I look over. I had my, I had my head down, I'm looking, I'm listening to music... And I look up and 
I see this kid like lean back on the windowsill, but he's like leaned all the way back and his head cocks back and he opens his eyes and he sees me. So he, he like jolts back up and he like starts tapping. He starts wailing at like the air. So I'm like, what the hell is he doing? He's like, just like fighting air. For yeah. I thought he was like smoking and he was like trying to blow oh, it okay, out. Okay. But as I walk by a girl gets up from her knees and runs down the hole. And this kid's running with his pants falling <laughs> down. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. No way that I just fucking see somebody getting their dick sucked in the middle of fucking school. And I think that just traumatized me so much that I never walked through that fucking hallway ever again. Oh, my because, God. Was because it like a deserted place or like? It was, no, not even. Like, there was literally like a security guard down the other hallway. And mm-hmm. then there was like. All the classrooms were filled with teachers, and kids were just walking back and forth, going to the bathroom, going to class. And this guy's just chilling, getting his dick sucked. <laughs> and 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 surprisingly enough, that's not the first time anybody's like somebody's gotten caught for dick sucking. That's just the first one that I saw that wasn't publicized around the school. Right. Now the other time somebody got caught sucking dick in the school, there was a girl named oh, I can't just name give her. her just give her like an alias name. We'll, we'll name her uh uh. uh What's close to her name? Like, uh, or just give her like a letter. We'll call her C. C. Okay. All all my Unidale people will definitely know who C is. <laughs> <laughs> but so yeah, so C was giving sloppy toppy to some other Haitian kid in in the in the school, and security guard comes in and is like, "What are y'all doing?" And 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 mind you, she gets she gets expelled for sucking dick in the in the in the hallway. He gets suspended for a couple of days. Uh-huh. I guess we could call that sexist. We could, we could. <laughs> definitely argue that. Yeah. But but yeah, so they get caught and she's getting made fun of right. like all around the school. Like everybody's like, "Yo, we know you suck dick and catwalk." Da 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 da. Like you're a thot, you're a hoe. Like kids are ruthless. Yo, for sure. And 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 this kid was like at the top of the world. Everybody knew who the fuck he was. Everybody was like, oh, that's that nigga who got his dick sucked in the hallway. <laughs> that's that nigga. And, oh, oh yeah, by the way, I'm Hispanic, and yes, I do say nigga. Because <laughs> okay. I was, I grew up listening to it, and people told me to say it, so if you got a problem, suck my dick. Anyways. Damn. Okay, when you yeah, said yeah, raw, yeah. we kept this raw. Yeah, but. we kept this raw. We're keeping this as raw as possible. Yeah, but. I won't be saying any, by the way, I won't be saying any N-words. I won't be saying none of that, but. But, I mean, obviously, I'm going to have uh, guests on of all different races, all different backgrounds. So, I I just hope that all listeners understand that part of it. Um, but, yes, we're keeping this raw as possible. So, go on. <laughs> but, yeah. but So, everybody knows this kid. And, and, and eventually, after a while, they all forget about him. But going back to C. So, oh, 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 mind you, I graduated high school in three years. Because, right, you graduated early. Yeah, yeah, because I said, fuck senior year, fuck high school, I'm done with it. So I doubled up my classes, and people were like, oh, you're so smart, you doubled up. It's really not the, it, like, it's the same shit. Like, I just, I, I didn't have lunch, I had two gym classes, and I had two of everything. So, I mean, it was literally just the same thing. I didn't do anything. That's right. why it's so corrupt, because there were kids that I knew that n- didn't come to school for, like, s- four or five months straight. They never showed up. And then they would show up, like, like in between, like, different weeks. And they graduated. Right. They all with graduated. A diploma with a diploma. They shook hands. They were at graduation. And I'm like, how? How? And then come to find out that, that actually the school systems out here, they'll take the grades of some kids and they'll boost them up. So... Administ- oh, actually, should I be talking about this? Ah, fuck it, whatever, I don't give a shit. But administrators will tell teachers, add points to the grade because we want to be known as a school who has a high graduation oh, okay. rate. So yeah. so teachers would take those kids' grades and be like, fuck it, you got a 33 in this class, but I'm going to give you a 65 because 65 is passing. Right, yeah. And, and I was a parent to that because, all right, so back to math. Math was not one of my strong suits at all. So, so I would skip math ninth grade. I skipped, I think three months and then teacher called my, uh, my cell phone because I was one of those kids who didn't never put their dad's information or parents information. I wish I was ahead on the curve on that. Not like it really affected me, but if it, if that came up, yeah, yeah, I should have done that. Yeah. But she calls me. She's like, hello, I'm looking for Mr. Mejia. I, I hang up. She calls back like seven times. I never answered. 
So then I'm like, fuck, I should probably go to school or to class. So I go to class and she sees me and she's like, oh, like it's, it's this kid again. So whatever, I fail class. I'm supposed to repeat algebra. But for some reason, I guess I, I got switched out of a guidance counselor. So they fucked up. So I ended up boosting up to geometry. Then my last year in 11th grade, I had to take algebra again. Again, I didn't go to algebra for the whole year. I failed the main class and then I had to take state exams. So I took the state exam and I bombed it. Like I know I bombed it because I missed half the test. I right. fell asleep. Oh, okay. I fell asleep and I missed a good chunk of the test. And I was supposed to fail and then go to summer school and then see if I could graduate then. Right. Mind you, I didn't want to do that because this whole year I was hyping up telling everybody, yo, I'm graduating early. Like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Right. And everybody, everybody else was still there. And everybody was going for me. They were like, you fucking go, bro. Like, leave, do it. Yeah, because I remember meeting everybody else and everybody else was still yeah, in high school. Yeah, yeah they were still they in high school. There, yeah. Yeah. So they were all hyping me up. They're like, yeah, fucking do it, bro. Fucking get the fuck out of here. And and I couldn't let my people down. So I fell asleep. I wake up. There's like five minutes left for the exam. I'm like, shit, I'm done. Like, I'm going to summer school. Couple months pass by. I finally get my results in August. So I, I missed summer school. So if I failed, I would have to go back to school for algebra. For the whole year. For the whole year. For the whole year. I would have to go to algebra and then get filled in with, like, electives or some shit. Right. And I get the test back. And I got a 65. So I passed the exam. I'm like, how? I only... So if the exam is, like, let's say, like, 100 questions, I only did about, like, maybe 40 to 60 questions. And there's no way you got 100%. There's no way I would... Not even close to a 65. Right. But I passed. And I graduated. And that's how I slowly started to figure out this system's all fucking corrupt. Right. It's all it's all types of shit. Right. But all right, outside of all the, the grades and all that bullshit, going back, um I did see a lot of drug deals for sure. Mm-hmm. Did walk in on a lot of kids smoking weed in the classrooms. I mean, this is all like pretty basic that's stuff. Pretty basic stuff. Yeah, I mean there were definitely things outside of the school that kinda did like like I was like, wow, like that's crazy. Like, there was this kid. I'm not gonna name him again, but there's yeah. this kid named D. D. Actually, no, no. People know a, a guy named D. Shit. We'll we'll name him A. We'll a. say A. A. So A was like, it was like 16 in like seventh grade. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Like <laughs> that's not a good start. <laughs> like, I remember there was like when I was in sixth grade, there was this eighth grader, and he would like literally drive to school. Oh he my was god! Like, what the fuck? Yeah, he was like 16, 17 years old, Holy and he was in shit. eighth grade. So yeah, I, I under, like you look at him you're like whoa. Yeah, he looked like a grown ass man. Like right, he had yeah. a goatee. Same man. This guy has facial hair. Yeah. So yeah. so a you know what I'm saying? He was he was like everybody knew he was a bad kid. Like his pants were literally like I'm no joke. His pants were literally would get to the back of his ankles. Like that's <laughs> how, that's how he wore his pants, and he would wear these long ass t-shirts, beanies, hats, or whatever. Wait, what do you mean by like what those pants went down his ankles? You're talking like. His waist, his waistband went down. Yeah, like his waistband was down <laughs> behind his kneecaps, and he would like waddle his way through the fucking hallways and shit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> just imagining this, like it's there's just so many people like I've seen like, yeah, that so like, like that. Yeah. So like, I mean, okay, so he's in prison now. So oh yeah. fuck, <laughs> I spoiled it, but but he's in prison now, so I'm well, not gonna get, get in there. trouble. Okay, so. I don't even know if I should be talking about this because, I mean, I you don't know any gangbangers, do you? No. All right, so we're good. No. So so yeah, so whatever. So so uh, one day I was in band with Willie. You <laughs> were in band. What were you playing? Ah fuck! Oh fuck! That's a whole nother story. But it, I was in band for like since like the f- third or fourth grade, and I switched through like seven different instruments because I man. yeah I went I started off with uh, with saxophone, mm. failed at that. Then my my elementary school uh, band teacher was like, all right, now play the trumpet because it's only got three fucking notes on it. You should probably learn that. <laughs> Failed that trumpet. She was like, okay, I'm going to give you a last resort. Play the fucking car- uh, the, the clarinet. So I played the clarinet and I bullshitted my way through. I would blow hot air into the machine. Yeah. I do all the, the instrument or whatever. And then I thought I was done after fifth grade. Come middle school, I have to take band again. For three fucking years, I had to take band. Yeah. And you would think that in the six years I was playing all types of instruments, I would learn something. I didn't learn jack shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how. I I got to, I think my last year of band was ninth grade. Yeah. That was my last year of band. 
and I remember we had this. <laughs> oh, fuck, I forgot his name. Uh, Mr. Winters. Mr. Winters? Yeah, Mr. Winters. That was his name. He was this bald-headed, um, cock, like literally cockeyed guy. He was my teacher, and every time he would talk to a student. The student would always be like, are you talking to me or are you talking to him? Because that's how fu- his eyes literally, like, they crossed. Right, right. Like, this eye was this way and this eye was this way. Mm-hmm. And and I remember one day he he made different sections of the band play certain parts of the song we were playing. And he got to, to the saxophones, which I was playing at the time. So, uh, like I mentioned before, I have a friend named Alex. So, it was me, Alex, this other kid named Brian, and... Oh, this other kid named Kenneth. Kenneth was like the prodigy of the fucking saxophone. Shit, man. Like this kid was like 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 what's his fucking name? Uh uh is it Kenny Rogers? I don't know. I don't I don't know any band people. Fuck. He's like smooth jazz. I think it's Kenny Rogers. Mm. Anyways, but but he's out here, he's he's fucking killing it. And then so the teacher gets to our section and he's like, Alright, saxophones play. And he's like, one, two, one, two, three, four. And it was only Kenneth playing the fucking saxophone. <laughs> the three of us sat there looking at this fucking teacher like, bro, we want to get the fuck out of here. Right, right. Now, mind you, I didn't know how to read music at all. Like, right. I, like, So you just put the saxophone in your mouth and you just like... I would just blow hot air blow and hot just air. pretend to play. Right. So then he got pissed. He was like, what's going on? Like, why aren't you guys fucking playing? And I was brave enough to be like, I don't know how to read the fucking music. <laughs> right. And he looked at me... With like such disgrace, because this man was like, like, which I was looking at you, yeah, yeah, the yeah. left eye or the right eye? Oh, fuck. <laughs> God damn it! No, but, but, okay. So like, the scary thing about him is he's a yeller. So he was one of those teachers that like did not take any shit from anybody. So, right. so he was that type of teacher. What race that, was he? he? This guy, I'm curious to know. He was he was black. Okay. But, okay. <laughs> but so. So this teacher, he had, I'm pretty sure he had some type of anger management issues because okay. the amount of yelling he did in, in, in the span of 45 minutes was fucking insane. He, he, he instilled fear into me. Right. That's when I think that's when anxiety hit me the most. Like that's when I learned what anxiety was. Your because, heartbeat, your heartbeat would go. Yeah, like, when because you're walking in that class. Be, yeah, yeah, before class, I would because okay, so there was two band teachers. There was Mr. Winters and then Mr. Um. I forgot his fucking name, but he was a light skinned like obese guy, <laughs> and and he was oh Mr. Holmes or was it yeah Mr. Holmes that's it that's his name, it was Mr. Holmes and Mr. Winters. Mr. Holmes was like the more like like you know suitable like I right, you know I'm calm but you know if I have to yell I'll yell at you. Right. Mr. Winters was that that guy who was like no I'm gonna beat the fuck out you. Right. Like I don't right. care if you're a student. So we would all pray that Mr. Holmes was teaching the class that day because Mr. Holmes was calm. He would let us go early. He'd always, you know, just let us do whatever. Mr. Winters was the fucking devil. So going back to the story. So I'm telling him, I don't know how to read music. And he squints both of his cock eyes. And he's like, he's like, what did you say to me? And I'm like, I don't know how to read music. And he looks at Alex. He's like, what about you? And Alex is like, no, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You just imagine Alex right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck if if y'all knew Alex, it would be a funnier image. Yeah, right. right. Just fucking put a, a picture of Alex or some shit. Oh yeah, we're gonna. I guess. Oh yeah, we could do some Google images. And fucking just that. slap right. down a photo. We'll just, throw, we'll just slap down on <laughs> like five seconds there. Okay, and then and then we'll move on now. Yeah, but but so then so then comes this other kid named Brian. Now Brian, mind you, he just didn't want to be in band. He knew how to play. He knew how to read. He knew how to play. He just didn't want to be in band. So he tells him, I don't know how to read. <laughs> And then, by all means, Kenneth comes and and Kenneth knows Mr. Winters because Kenneth, like I said, he was like a prodigy. So so, all the teachers basically knew him, all the band teachers. And and Kenneth comes and he's like, I don't know how to read this song. <laughs> and and he, the teacher, literally he, like he was on a stool. I, he literally he got up, he kicked the stool, slammed on the wall. He comes up to us and he's like play the song and i'm like i'm like oh shit like it's real like this is high <laughs> yeah, school this is really happening this is this is what unidale is about Wait, you're back in saxophone now at this point yeah this is ninth grade this ninth was grade. my last year of band i was okay, playing okay. saxophone all right let me give all right all right so so all right third grade was saxophone fourth grade was uh trumpet 
fifth six was clarinet, and then seventh, eighth, and ninth was saxophone so again. Okay, yeah. All right. So so he's yelling at us. He's like, "Play the song," and I'm like, "Oh fuck!" And I look at Alex. He's looking at me. I look at Brian. He's looking at Kenneth. Kenneth is looking at the teacher. The teacher's I don't know who the fuck he's looking at. Fucking cockeyed <laughs> yeah. bitch. But. So then, so then he's like, he's like, all right, you know what? He's like, you guys don't want to play the fucking song. He's like, you guys have to come every day at your lunch period and come learn this fucking song. I said, fuck that. He, he was like, he was like serious about his shit. So he would literally, he would go to the lunchroom and find you and find us. He would, he, he, even at one point, this is somebody else. He even at one point yanked the kid out of class because he could not play like three notes oh and he got God. fucking pissed he was like you're learning how to play three notes today and then by the time i had he was uh band was my last class ninth period so by the time we got there that kid already knew how to play the fucking song so so going back or whatever so i never went and then i ended up skipping band for like two weeks straight again because it was ninth period so oh and i guess this is where i get to introduce noe no way blanked. No way. I don't know what you want to call him. No way is 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 a wonder child. He's yeah, he's we'll, a, have, we'll maybe have him on eventually. Yeah. Knowing no I way. I don't know if he could do a whole. I mean, maybe he could do a whole episode, but you think? Shit. Or maybe we just have him on for like ten minutes of. I mean, he he kind of wanted one. I don't know. If he yeah, I, for forty five <laughs> minutes. For forty five minutes straight. I don't know. I mean, nobody. He he likes to talk when he's he in likes the mood. To talk. That's true. Yeah. No. No. He's no. He's a. Uh, uh, a moody person. So wait, what about A? Oh shit, I forgot about A. Holy shit. So wait, Spinner doesn't want to go to Fuck, A. I'm bouncing all around the place. Right. So so um so I would skip class. I would leave the school early. So only seniors got to leave this the school. Cause uh they had like four or five periods or whatever. Right. And and I would always leave. Like, I would just walk out the building and just go to McDonald's and meet up with Noe. Now, mm-hmm. me and Noe have known each other since the second grade. So, so I know Noe, like, the back of my fucking hand. I don't know if he knows me, like, the back of his fucking hand. But we would always go. And we'd always be chilling at McDonald's or whatever. And then one day, um, Alex tells me. No, Brian, the other kid. He tells me. He's like, yo, bro, like, they're looking for you. <laughs> and I'm like, who? He's like, the teachers. Like, they're like, where the hell are you? I'm like. So I go, and and it's Mr. Holmes, so I'm saved. But miss, mind you, Mr. Holmes was a really, like, big, obese guy. Yeah. So he could only, like, his body would move with him. Oh. So, like, he, he didn't have a neck, so he couldn't turn his oh, neck to God look. Oh, damn. Because as soon as he turned his neck, it was shoulder fat blocking his weight. He's that big. He's 400 he, pounds big. He, he, he kind of looked like it. Yeah, okay. He was a short guy. He was, like... Five five, and he was pretty big. Damn. So he he turned his whole body. He looked at me. He was like he was like George. Where the hell have you been? So whatever. And then I go back in, and then and then yeah, and then that was banned. Nothing too crazy. And then yeah, I would skip school. Anyways, back to A. A. So we want to know about A. So A. So I was sitting in band with Willie, and um, and so so we're there and we're learning and everything and. My band teacher for middle school was Mr. Givens. He turns around and sees this tall, scrawny kid running out the building and, like, just leaving. Yeah. And mind you, like, this is how I knew nobody really gave a shit. Because instead of, like, chasing after him and trying to, like, tell him to come back, all the teachers just stood at the doorframe and were like, wow, like, this kid really had the balls to just leave. So he leaves, doesn't come back, gets suspended or whatever. Boom, couple years passed by. I think I graduated high school at this point already. Um, so this is A that he ran out? Yeah, so this okay. is A. So he ran out, got suspended, never heard from him again. Couple years passed by. I graduated high school, and I like to go through the news sometimes because, honestly... Oh, that's another topic we have to get into. Long Island news? Oh, my God. Some okay. people are fucking retarded. Yeah. So I go and I check the news, and and I see two Long Island men kill grandmother in um in house robbery or some shit like that so i'm reading the article and i'm looking at it and everything and i see a's name in the thing in the article and i'm like there's no fucking way this this kid did something and i'm scrolling down and there's his fucking mugshot next to the other guy who who killed the grandmother now mind you i think the story was like like they got pissed because some guy didn't pay him for like like 
30 40 dollars worth of weed or some shit like that That that's just pennies so yeah Yeah. so he they like raided the house or some shit were asking where the fuck the kid was killed his grandma and 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 yeah and now he's like he's probably in jail for life he's yeah i'm pretty sure he's doing life in prison and it's like i don't know how i didn't see that like it was it's just like (laughs) it's crazy because like (laughs) There was this, there's so many kids that I went to middle school with that, like, are just doing stupid shit now. Yeah. Like, there was this other kid, uh, we'll call him X, because his name was, uh... Okay, okay. You yeah. get the point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, so, actually, no, I shouldn't say X, because people are going to get confused. We'll, we'll call him Avier. We'll say Avier. Fuck it. Avier? All right. Yeah, we'll if get... Want, if you want to go that close <laughs> to this man's name. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you know an Avier. No, I don't know an Avier. Anyways... So, Avier was another one that I found on the news. So, mind you, Avier in school, we everybody knew him as that, like, short-tempered kid who was weird and shit like that. Right. He'd always talk to me about porn and, like, eating <laughs> pussy. And I'm like, bro, we're in sixth grade. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> he and was ahead of his time. He was thinking, like... He was. He was, he was thinking as, like, somebody who's, like, three, four years he, older. He was the first person to show me what hentai porn was. With hentai, you, this he, man's watching hentai. He was at, watching hentai at twelve. At twelve years old, he showed me what it's hentai. It's not even was. that one time where you you click on and you're like, "What the fuck is this?" No, he like we were in he gym. He was consistently watching this. Yeah, shit. like it was oh like a God. yeah, it was like a rainy day in gym class and and sorry, I'm getting a phone call, um and and what's it called and um. So, oh shit. So it's a rainy day in gym class. We couldn't go outside. So we're sitting on the bleachers. He's like, yo, George, I got to show you something. So I look over and it's this like fairy little Asian girl getting fucking mauled by a fucking like this grown ass fucking like half horse, half like human being. And it's literally like, like this like 12 inch fairy. And he's just, like, laughing his ass off. He's like, you see how she's getting fucking broken? You see that? I'm like, oh, my God. But I could not take my eyes off of it. I'm like, yo. Because like, you're so stunned. I'm like, yo, this because is. you've never seen that before. This no. is cartoon porn, bro. Like, right. this is amazing. So I amazing go. Amazing in what kind of way? You're shocked. I'm shocked. Like, this is, like, actual, like, literal cartoon porn. Right. And, like, what. And, and that scarred me for life. Oh, and for sure. I would, too. So I already knew this kid was fucking weird. Couple years later, again, I don't know if I graduated high uh, high school or if I was in high school, but come to find out, this kid stabbed another kid at the park because he lost a basketball game. Like it's just, like the most fuckity stuff that these these guys. Are I, exactly. Somebody. You, I'm gonna say this now. Uniondale niggas ain't shit. I'll t- I'll say this right now. You can come after me. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but he he lost the game and he just he pulls out a knife and just stabs the kid and just runs. He, like, was the kid okay? I mean, once no, stabbed. yeah, he was alive. The kid okay, survived. Okay. He just got stabbed. But like, but like, I don't like. He just picked up an attempted murder case for. Yeah, yeah, for no, for for, for a, a fucking, fucking basketball. basketball game. Game. Yeah. yeah. So. So yeah, so yeah. Uniondale niggas just fuck y'all. All right. So <laughs> un, this is Uniondale, but I want to transition to while well, we know each other. Oh the, oh shit! So. <laughs> It, short. I'll, I'll say this part. I don't really want to talk too much about myself on here, but I will. I feel like I do have to say this one. So I I was working at a Chuck E. Cheese back home, and I transferred. I transferred up here in my uh, sophomore year, and they they gave me the close location when I was back in Maryland. So my manager Maryland, she came up to me. She's like, she's like, um, you know, let's go look for your close location. She's like, oh, Hempstead. This is this is one mile away from your destination from where you live. I'm like, okay, all right, I'll transfer there. Not knowing, like, what the fuck was about to, what about, was about to happen here. Fucking all hell broke oh loose. Oh, my God, all hell broke loose. So, I got transferred there, and I literally remember, it, now, Hempstead is, is the hood. I mean, literally, I've, God, I, I, I'm probably going to have to spread out, like, like, stories from there. I tell people I can write two, 300-page books about my four months oh, working fuck. at the Hempstead Hell location. Yeah. And yeah. If, he, if he was contributing, then it would be even more. Yeah, now imagine a whole lifetime of living in fucking around Hempstead. Oh, my God. I could only imagine. So I get there. This is my scenery. So the, the navigation, it takes me through this back way, and there's a Home Depot, and it's like a shopping plaza. And so there's this Home Depot, and I remember driving through there, and it was like a, it was like a morning shift. 
There is, I would say, fifty. How many do you think there of there are that of them are there? Oh, we're what talking you, about uh, uh, Mexicans. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, wetbacks. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No. I'm Hispanic, no, no, no. so I can say. I can say. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, where are they from? Yard, Hispanic people. Hispanic people. Okay. Yard people looking for yard work or yeah. house improvement work yeah. or whatever. There was like fifty of these guys are just drinking beers. I'm just oh, driving yeah. through here, and I'm like, I'm looking around. I'm like, holy shit, are they looking at me? Like, I, I don't, I don't know. So I get past there, and then I, the second thing I noticed is that there was a, um, a cop car always riding oh, around yeah, there. Yeah, there was yeah, one yeah. or two always at all For times sure. in that plaza. So I'm like, holy shit, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, yo, I see people like sitting on the on the sidewalk. Like, I'm seeing m- m- motherfuckers riding bikes through this shit, and I'm like, what the fuck? There's a family dollar nearby. If there's ever a family dollar nearby, oh, you know yeah. you're... It, it, it might not be, like, the, the ghetto, but you might be in, like, some white trash, like, but you're, yeah, you're village. Def- yeah, you're, you're, def- not in the, you're not in the sexiest place. We'll just put it that yeah. way. You, you see Sam, family dollar. Family dollar was right behind yeah, But if you see a dollar city, you'll be okay. Dollar, yeah, Dollar General, Dollar City. Any, any like Dollar Tree, ninety nine cent store, you know your your Dollar Tree, ninety nine yeah. cent Family Dollar, yeah, all of those, all yeah. of them. So, anyways, I'm I'm driving through there and I'm like, where the hell am I? So I get into the Chuck E. Cheese for my first day, and um, it literally looked like a fucking zoo. I mean, it was it was crazy. This was the hood Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, so this is like on another. This is. Chuck E. Cheese, but even more wild. You know, if you go to Chuck E. Cheese, the kids are going to be going crazy, regardless. But these guys, they're like, it's like the kids, when they get their kid stamp in, they like they have to snort a line of Coke. Oh, like, fuck yeah. And so do the parents. Actually, the parents have to snort like three, four lines of Coke apiece. The, the parents wouldn't do shit. Like, they were just as crazy. They're probably even worse. Yeah. There's, oh, we know a couple parents. Oh, yeah. Like, like, Eyebrow Lady, you remember her? Red hair. Oh, sweet. She Who's she the, would like always the homeless prostitute looking bitch. Yeah, she would always she would stay past. Yeah. Yes. We'll have to talk to her about her in a bit. So, anyways, I I get there. I look around. It smells like shit. And I I go in there and I'm like, how the fuck am I gonna? Why, why did I do this? Yeah. And that was my first day. That was my. And I was like, this is a fucking disaster. And I was there for four months. So we had some very interesting coworkers there. No, for sure. And I guess we'll focus on that today, and then maybe we'll do the maybe we'll, well maybe we have to do a second podcast. Who fucking knows? Oh, we'll fuck because, yeah. because the customers and like the employees are like they're Chuck E. Cheese just needs like its own special episode for sure. Like we need like a like a Chuck E. Cheese for reunion sure. podcast yeah. or some shit. Oh like goddamn, we gotta get a bunch of mics. We gotta oh, add the it. USBs in for shit. sure. So I um okay so. The one story that I, I think I have to talk about... Well, actually, for one, a lot of people have been wanting to know the answer to this. There was that Shane Dawson video that came out about the Chuck E. Cheese... Pe- oh, you heard about that, right? Yeah, it's, that's that's it's actually like funny. Okay, so, unfortunately, and I gotta say, I don't like Chuck E. Cheese at all. As an organization, I don't, I don't like them. I met some great people there, um, but... I don't like Chuck E. Cheese as an organization. It was definitely the worst job. Well, the one in Hempstead was the worst job I had. The one in Maryland wasn't too bad. But the one in Hempstead was terrible. Um, the Chuck- the pizza's not reused. Usually, uh, there's there's a few things that happen. One, we have like just somebody who's like an absolute idiot that's like doing the bread. Like Tim. Oh, yeah, you remember yeah, Tim? Yeah. Tim's oh, not going to watch the podcast. Sorry, Tim. Wait, wait, hold on. Hold- the question the about- white guy with the No, no, no yeah. Spot, question yeah. about Tim, though. I heard he was like twenty five. Oh yeah, he was like twenty six. He was twenty five, bro. He had no hair on the his guy head. had no hair. He had a bald spot, but he his his hair was so greasy and long. It was really bad. He got hired because um his dad was the what like like engineer or, like, like the game the technician game, yeah, game yeah. technician. So yeah, that guy was that guy was weird. But I didn't walk. I didn't. I remember one time since me and him were the only white guys that are working there. Um, I remember him. We were making pizzas like on both sides of the of the like the what is it the um, counter the counter Shoot. or whatever, and he comes up to me. He's like, he was just talking blah 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 blah, blah. and he's like, yeah, us white guys have to stick together. And I'm like, fuck you, like <laughs> you fucking suck, <laughs> like dude, like you were one of the like top five like worst employees. If you were in any of my other jobs, you'd be the worst employee. He was a dumbass. Some of the pizzas that he made, they looked. 
totally different. They, they look totally different. Like, I'm yeah. just sure a five year old could have like. Uh, yeah, I've made... had to return a couple pieces because it. Didn't... Yeah, so like, so that's one of the reasons that like that people, because they're because those pizzas are so bad that the cutter will try to like cut them, um, like normal, but they can't. Well, like those pizzas no. are beyond. Yeah, you can't. They just look like shit. Uh, and then the second way is that sometimes this is. Oh, yeah. Sometimes employees will get hungry. I never did. I'm lactose intolerant, so I don't really eat like the pizza there. No, I don't really have any lactate no. pills on me. But um, they'll sometimes. So let's say you have a 12 slice pizza. They'll cut like 14 slices instead of 12, and they'll make like sliver slices. And they'll take those sliver slices and they'll take them out and they'll eat those. Yeah. And as a result, it deforms the pizza. Yeah. I really wanted this whole reuse pizza thing to be true, and maybe it is in other locations. I'm, perhaps it is, but the fact I wouldn't is that be we, surprised. Yeah, we worked in Hempstead, and they didn't do it in Hempstead. It makes me think that it's right. You know, because like of shit. all locations to do it, like if oh. one thing that my other location wouldn't do it, but when I was in Hempstead, I would totally suspect that they would do that. That's the type Holy of shit. Sh- they would I didn't do. even think about that. Holy shit! Because because y'all more were like bottom of the barrel ghetto Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, because the pizza that was never finished, I would either throw it out. It or I was sit. I was game room uh, right. attendant. Or and whatever you had to, shit and called. as a game room attendant, you had to run food. Yeah, you had to run fix fix games. All I would do was restack tickets. That's all I fucking did. Yeah, pretty much. Like like, but yeah, but the pizza that I would like that people wouldn't eat, I would either throw it out or I would bring it to the back. And, and the employees would eat it. Yeah, and then we would take it home or some bullshit. Now, mind you, Chuck E. Cheese pizza, although they did make it terrible, there were some some pizzas that weren't so bad. Like yeah. the like the cheesy crust, that was pretty fire. Yeah, they're good. Chuck E. Cheese pizza's not bad fresh. Oh, fr- it's yeah. not fresh. It's but, pretty good. But you but have once like it sits. You, you have, have like, like 10 minutes. five seconds to eat that pizza. Yeah, you gotta eat that pizza. It's like me. it's like like a worse version of Little Caesars. Mm. You like Little Caesars? No, I don't like Little Caesars. Oh, I like I Chuck E. Cheese more than Little Caesars. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I don't really like that. Nah. Ugh. I don't nah. like the five dollar hot and ready. That's nah. not for me. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that shit's frozen for sure. Yeah, for sure. But but anyways, so. So some of the some of the coworkers we met here are just insane. Um, like I said, I don't really want to bring that many stories up in our past, but uh, my past. But I believe that this one's relevant because George worked there with me. Oh yeah. So okay, so there was this guy, and and this is he was there when I first transferred there. His name we'll call him. I guess we shouldn't expose his name, right? We'll call him. Wait, which one? Fisherman. Fisherman. We'll call him Fisherman. Taylor. Oh. oh you probably, y'all, y'all probably heard that. Yo, fuck it. We're, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna call him by his name. He's on the news, bro, yeah, so it don't matter. No, this man's weird, so he deserves to get exposed. Okay, okay. His name is Taylor. All right, his name is Taylor. So Taylor <laughs> was um, about, he was taller than me. He was like about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, probably, Jesus. at least. And you're he, fucking tall, bro. I'm 6'1", six, 6'1", six six, and so he's like, he was like 6'2", 6'3", 6'4". I remember... He talked really slowly. That was the first thing. He talked like he talked like this. Oh, he talked I, really deep voice. He was twenty four. Um, he he would come in when he would come into the store sometimes when he wasn't on shift. He would look like a fisherman. That's why I call him fisherman because he would have a bucket <gasps> hat. He was oh a black God. dude, by the way, and he would he had um, a a fisherman hat. He had a fisherman vest. He had baggy. Like wide jeans, he had boots on. What the hell? Yeah, that's why he would come in. I don't, I don't think I was working when when he was there. I, I, he may have been there when you when you first like came in. Maybe he may have still been there. He definitely Possibly. was fired by the time like you were there when he got fired. I think because uh-huh. he got fired in like November. Oh yeah, and I joined yeah, in you, like October. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You were probably there, but you probably didn't work with the guy that much. No, he didn't work like every day of the week. Mm. So, anyways, so I remember he was a little strange. What first made me think that he was strange? Nobody wants to be in Chuck E. Cheese for that long, but this guy would purposely, when he's cleaning the kitchen, he would take a purposely a long time to because he wanted to make more money. So he would like oh. he would take longer yeah to do his work. And I remember I was talking to him. Uh, usually when you're a kitchen person, there's like two people closing the kitchen. And I was talking to him, and I was wondering in my head, like, what does this guy do in his free time? He's 24. He doesn't really seem like he, he's not – he's a weird guy. Okay, I already know – it's just facts. This man is weird. So I'm talking to him, 
And I'm like, what do you do in your free time? He's like, you know, I play video games every now and then. I have one friend. and uh, But my favorite passion is I like to uh, sit in a chair for like four or five hours and just think. I like to just think and see see where my my mind goes and my mind takes me. I don't know if this guy was taking drugs. I don't think he was. I think he was just that fucking weird. Oh, what? Jesus Christ. Maybe he was drinking some alcohol or something. Well, he definitely drank alcohol because we'll, yeah. we'll get to we'll get well, I'll get to that. This is validates that. Oh boy. But um so he was like I'm like what the fuck? And then another time I was closing with him and he was like what is a friend to you? And then, like, we're closing, we're closing the store of Chuck E. Cheese, and you want to ask me what's a friend to you? Nobody who's sane asks somebody because, like, I didn't, I did not consider this guy, like, I did not talk to this guy that much. So this guy just randomly asks me. This may be our tenth conversation we've ever had. That's not like, oh, okay, I'll get the dough from the back or some shit like that. And he's asking me, what's a friend to you? I'm like, I'm not no damn philosopher. Like, what the fuck? I was like puzzled. And he was that one friend I was talking about. Like, he said, like, he's like, he has one friend. Like, he was talking about that guy. Yeah. I could only imagine what freak that guy is. I really Oh, Jesus Christ. So, anyway. Who even knows if he's real? Yeah. Like, could be imaginary. He could be imaginary. There is a shot. So, I remember. Oh, another thing with him is I never. Oh, I guess I should get to that later. Okay. So, let me get to the reason he got fired. So, let me get to the reason he got fired. So he was asked to um, to do kid check. He was a kitchen guy, but they asked him to just like stand and do kid check. So he was at kid check, and he decided to get lit at work. And in New York, you can serve alcohol at um, at Chuck E. Cheese's. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can serve alcohol back home. I you can't do that. Those stores aren't allowed. But in New York, you can. So what he does is he grabs a soda cup, fills it with beer, goes oh, to my kid gosh. check. And start just drinking that shit. Oh my gosh! And they got he got caught. And and mind you, like the beer at Chuck E. Cheese isn't even. It's like, like Miller Lights. Yeah, and like, like it's Bud Light and shit like that. You're it's not terrible. gonna get fucked up. And it was like a two drink limit, so there's no yeah, way anybody's two getting fucked up for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I think I think it was. I want to say it was Jaquan that found out that it was that that. Oh, Jaquan. Jaquan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Chuck. <laughs> yeah, man. So anyways, yeah, shout out Jay Kwan. Maybe we'll get him on the podcast once. But anyways, um, you caught him. And then, um, so that he got fired. And I, I never heard about him for like a, a little bit, for like a couple of weeks. And, okay, Grant, okay, here's another thing with him. When I used to close with him, like we used to get out at the same time, I never saw him drive. Not once. He would always walk home in the middle of Hempstead. He'd walk home. What? Well, oh my and in the middle of the night but like <sighs> like I've been ran up by a crackhead in the middle of the night oh yeah yeah, go, yeah leaving yeah. out of that place so this yeah. guy was literally at the same time like he was walking down blocks oh yeah you know in, in this place and yeah. I, so I'd never seen him ever um drive come to find out so Long Island I think it was the Long Island News like Long Island ABC it was like it was News 12 that's what it was it was News, news 12? 12 okay yeah. they broke a story so he became an Uber driver. Now I don't know how the fuck this guy got a car. I oh, don't know. Shit. Did, <laughs> oh shit! You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Now. Yeah. Okay. So he was. <laughs> so he was driving this woman. Oh my god. And he ends up exposing himself. Oh my! Like like. Oh he my. showed his dick. Yeah. All right. To this woman. All right. I read the news story. So, so he picks up. He picks up the lady, right? And she's. By the way, she's like, like a chubby Hispanic woman. Like yeah. She's she, not, and she's like. But when we mean older too, yeah, like she was like, something yeah, probably. yeah, yeah, yeah. But from what I read in the story, they made him sound like such a normal person in the beginning. Like he was just like, oh, like he was just keeping conversation with the lady. Da, 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 da. Now, mind you, what the hell was he talking to her about? If he was talking to me about um, that, he thinks for five hours and this is the shit that he's thinking about, too. Exactly. Like stuff like this. Exactly. What? So I never thought about that. Like maybe he's like, if he's thinking, maybe he's thinking of like philosophical stuff or like, you know, maybe he's trying to think of like how to make the earth green or some shit like that. No, this man's was thinking in his head to show his cock while driving. 
like, I don't, how do you reach a point to just have enough courage to just say, fuck it? Fuck it. And I'm going to fuck up my life and, and I'm going to become a sexual predator. But he probably thought it was like, it's going to work. I saw it in porn. That's probably what he was probably oh, thinking. Oh, facts. Because yeah, that's what happens in porn. Because in porn, Nick fucking, he whips his deck out and she's like, oh my God. And fucking, there's the porn. Right. He probably thought he was going to whip it out and she's going to grab it start sucking his dick or some shit. Yeah. Lady literally, like, she's a trooper, by the way. Yeah. He's, like, playing with his dick in front of her. Yeah. And she's still keeping conversation, trying to act she, calm. She kept conversation? She was like, like, oh, yeah, like, uh-huh, like, yeah, that's right, that's right, while calling the police. Right. So she's like, yeah, yeah, I just have to make a phone call. And she 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 calls and she's like, da 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 he, I think, from what I remember, I think he drops her off, and then the police finds him later on, or they might have gotten pulled over. Sense, yeah. But like, like, and how, his, in his, how? in his trial, or his court, whatever appearance, where he was getting maybe his bond bail set or some shit. He's like, I was just fixing my pants. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was just fixing oh, my pants, my and then gosh. I was literally, and and hearing that quote, I could literally imagine him, and I was like. Oh my God! Let me just put that in his voice. I was just fixing my <laughs> pants, and like, I could just totally see him. That's such a Taylor's thing to say. But like, that's such a Taylor thing to say. Like at that, no, honestly, at that, like, how do you imagine getting like pulled over? Like they were both in the car. His dick is still out. Like imagine he got pulled over. Like what do you tell the police officer? Like what? What? Like. I mean, maybe he had enough time to fucking stuff it back in or some shit. I bet he did. I don't fucking know, but But like, Uber drivers, I think they all have cameras in the car. Do they really? I think they do. I know Lyfts do. Well, I mean, this was like, what, like the beginning of Uber, kind of? No, this was only like 18 months ago. Really? Well, yeah, it was only 18 months ago. I mean... I thought it was 2017. We're in 2019. Was well, it? yeah, end of Oh, 2018. Yeah. That's right, that 2018. It was like... Was it 2018? No, he he did this in like the end of 2017. Oh, he did. Oh, so like now we're in. Oh May. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's yeah, like so. he did it in like December. So they the reporters went to his house. They found his house. They oh, yeah. to try to like ask his mother what he thought, and she was like, "Get the hell off my lawn!" <laughs> Shit was crazy. Oh my! Now he's 25, living with his mom, exposing 26. himself. And here's the other crazy part. So we at Chuck E. Cheese, we worked with with I guess girls from Uniondale and Hempstead. Yeah. So it was mainly like Hempstead girls. Queens too, yeah. Oh, in Queens, yeah. Yeah. But mind you, some of these girls were like 15, 16, 17. Yeah. And I knew a couple girls who told me about him and they were like like he like wanted to bring me home to his house. I wouldn't be stunned. Yeah, yeah and and they would be like he would be like, hey, like, like you trying to come back to my house? Like, I, you know, I got things to do at my house. And they'd be like, how old are you? And he's like, oh, I'm only 24. How old are you? And they'd be like, I'm 16. And he'd yeah. be like, he'd be like, I remember this. I'm not going to say her name. But I remember she telling me, um, I was like, I'm 16. And he's just like, I can be 16 too. Oh, my God. Fuck, man. And I was like, Jesus Christ, this guy, yeah. this guy has fucking balls. Dude, and I tried to be nice to the guy at first when I first met him because I think he was working that first shift that I had there. Yeah. But then I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Like, you know, something was totally wrong with this guy. Yeah, I'm kind of glad I, I, I didn't really work with him like that because I probably would have been weirded out. Yeah. But, but I don't know. I just, that's like six... That's a whole nother topic. That's a whole nother way. topic, yeah. To, so all you, like, rapists and pedophiles, I don't know if y'all listening out here, like, undercover pedophiles and shit, what, like, what runs through your mind thinking a 16-year-old girl looks fine as fuck? There must be two scenarios. One, they're either thinking, like, I can't get anything, so I'll just divert to that, yeah. or they seriously are, like, interested in, like, people who look but, like they're... But then, the only, the only, th- I'm not defending them, the only thing I will give them is... Girls nowadays, like younger girls, they look like they're fucking twenty something. Like sometimes, like can. compared to how how that's how, why you gotta ask her age. Like yeah. I'm dead ass, dead ass at times. Um, I mean it hasn't happened to me, but if I was in that situation like that, I would be even tempted to like say fucking whip out your ID. Yeah. Fucking whip oh, out for your sure. ID. If you're like, like oh. especially if you're like like a rapper or something or like, someone with like serious clout. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. I would be like, I would be scared. I would yeah. be like, whip out your ID. Yeah. Because it's, show me that it's crazy. Because, like, 
like not like 15 years ago like middle schoolers look like middle schoolers yeah like they were ugly as shit going through puberty nowadays i see middle schoolers and i'm out here thinking they're like high schoolers in college or some shit like that right like they dress crop tops fucking like ripped jeans and all that and i'm not judging anybody you could wear whatever the hell you want but like but like i this is such a touchy subject to get on yeah but it's like it's I can understand how some guys get caught up and confused. Right. Especially through internet stuff. Because a girl can upload a photo, look 20, look 18, 19, but be fucking 14 years old. Facts. Because there's fucking... There's like eight-year-olds who are makeup gurus on fucking YouTube. Exactly. And it's fucking insane. Yeah. And and it's crazy how many people get caught up by like... By like, I guess catfishes in some type of way. Facts, yeah, yeah. But still, going back, like, how do you... Like... She, you see them she, in person too, and she yeah, tells you she's she 16. tells you, "I'm 16," and you answer with, "I could be 16 too." What is wrong with you? <laughs> so fucked. What is like? That is so fucked. What go? Oh my god! Like we're eventually we're gonna. I guess we're just gonna have to do a part two eventually, like in a couple of weeks. Or eventually, something. because yeah. we have to talk about Michael. Oh boy, you know. Oh shit, you know Michael lives like two blocks from me, right? Yeah. From right yeah, here. Yeah, he lives like two, me, three like, blocks. Like here. Yeah, we have to talk about him. Oh, man. Michael. Whew. Oh, man. He's. Taylor is like 1A in terms of weirdos. Michael is like 1B. Yeah. He's up there. Yeah. I, he's one of the guys that Michael. Taylor got caught for his shit. Michael could get caught. Like, he was like one of those, like, who who you could get caught. Maybe I should be using a fake name. But nah, we're just saying Michael. Fuck it. Fuck it. Fuck Anyways. It. We're, we're using real names because we're trying to protect people out here. Fuck. Yeah, fuck it, fuck it. But, we're just trying to expose some of these pedophiles. All right. Anyways, so, all right, I think we're going to kind of wrap this up now. But do you want to talk about uh, your photos here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, um, so, yeah, I've been doing photography for like a year, guys. So, I mean, um, shit, I don't know where I was going with this. <laughs> well, I've been doing photography for, uh, for a year. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just got into it. It's kind of like a hobby right now, but, um, you know, I do do photo shoots for people who, who do want to hit me up. You can hit me up at, uh, Huey gets lost. That's H U E Y. I don't know why people pronounce it fucking Hugh. They Dumbasses. read, they read my name. Idiots. Yeah. They read my name and they're like, abominations of society. Oh my, there's one girl who came up to me and was like, Oh, are you Huey? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, man! And I thought I thought only Walter called me that. Walter would call Walter me. Walter calls you that. He would call me oh, Huey. We have Walter on. Here yeah, he sure. would call me Huey. Yeah. And this girl comes up to me and she's like, "Are you, are you Huey gets lost?" And I'm like, "Get the Damn. fuck out of my fucking!" But yeah, but I do photography. I don't charge much. If uh if you're new and I don't really know you, I'll probably only charge you like. Fifteen twenty dollars to be honest with you, I don't I don't really charge that much. Right. Depending depending on the photo location and what it's for, but yeah, you guys can hit me up at Huey Gets Lost again. That's H U E Y Gets Lost on Instagram, and you can follow my personal Huey Gets Saved. There we go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying, man. So yeah. yeah, so just follow me. You know what I'm saying? Hit me up for some photos, weddings, birthday parties. Your cousin just made it out of prison. You know what I'm saying? Just just let me know. Yeah. Yeah. And um. So anyway, so I like thank you. I've been uh first of all, I've been I've been shooting with um with Huey for like what since the fall. It's been like, yeah, fall. it's been so like, like eight months or so. Eight months. He's been yeah. the best photographer I've worked with, no doubt, no doubt. So thanks, man. Thanks. So um definitely hit him up. He's got he's got a good mind. He's not only good at shooting the photos, but he's good at like bringing the best out of them. You know, oh, getting yeah. the colors. I'll right, make all you ugly motherfuckers right. look good. Yeah. All you. To, all you dusty bitches will look fine <laughs> yeah, as fuck. Yeah, y'all look fine as fuck for your little, <laughs> for your Tinder accounts and shit, man. Oh, and I don't condone the 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 word bitch. I just yeah, nah, fuck do, bitches, yeah. man. <laughs> fuck no. Nah, Anyways, kidding. so I uh, yeah, so um, and uh, I'm gonna put a. I don't at the time of this recording, I don't have a. Ch- I, I have to change my YouTube channel name. Um, <laughs> to, so I guess I'll do like the ten twenty podcast on YouTube for now. Until I find, like, a good name. If you guys have any um, name suggestions, let me know. But just just know that I get 100% ownership of that fucking name, okay? That's my name, you motherfuckers. Um, so, anyway, so, yeah, we'll have that on there. And then I'll be changing my SoundCloud as well to 1020 Podcast. So, if you want to listen to the audio version in the background, um, 
just uh, take his first stroll. Yeah, you know, the just, park, just you, know, know you want to listen on SoundCloud. I'll put it on SoundCloud as well. Maybe if this takes off a little bit, I'll do like Spotify and Apple, like iTunes or some shit. Yeah. But um, yeah, YouTube and uh, uh, SoundCloud. If you want to follow me on um, on Instagram, it's S K B E N I T G. Uh, follow me on there. Um, and if you want to contact me, contact me through Instagram. Um, and uh, maybe I'll give you my Snapchat or some shit like that. But I'm definitely looking to do more of these podcasts. I'm going to be in Maryland for like the next like 10 days after this. So if there's somebody in Maryland that wants to do a podcast, I'd be totally up for it. Uh, one other thing, I did a fast food tier list with my roommate <laughs> as a test run to see that this, this, these mics worked and shit like that and screen recording. So I'll be uploading that probably Monday or Tuesday of next week. So be on the lookout for that stuff. It's, uh, it was pretty fun to do. And anyways, uh, so thank you for coming on. This Anytime. is iconic. You're Anytime. the first guest. We got we got flicks. Anytime of man. this shit. Anytime. Yes, we're gonna have to probably do a part two because we have uh, we have some more to talk oh, about. Yeah. Definitely Chuck E. Cheese stories. Chuck E. Cheese concert stories. Just just walking through the streets of Uniondale and Facts. Hempstead is already enough. Right. Exactly. Oh boy. It's, so anyway, it's a whole long process. Yeah. <laughs> so I appreciate you coming on, and I appreciate all of you listening. If you did. Um, I know, you know, you've probably been listening for a minute. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. And, uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for watching, and um, hope to hope to see you guys soon. Hell yeah. Yeah. Bye-bye. Well, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>